Um, Sarah Gavron, the director I've worked with before on Brick Lane, um, actually arrived with an amazing body of research and it was incredibly broad. But I think as someone who's worked on a number of biopics, including Margaret Thatcher's Iron Lady, I realised that you have to find a prism in a way to try and narrow, not the range of the film, but the perspective sometimes, because there's so much material. So when we came to look at the suffragette movement, what was fascinating was there were a number of memoirs, predominantly by um, middle class and the aristocratic elite, um, but this, I kept on hearing this word reoccur, which was foot soldier. And I thought, that's a really interesting word. Who were the foot soldiers? And I, when I started to look at the photographic evidence, I realized there was this huge army of women. And combined with some of the testimonies of working women, it really made me prism in on this and realize that actually this might be a great way to focus a story about the movement. So mm -hmm. I think when we started to find the character of Maud, who is the central character of a working class woman, we started to find a way of um, navigating our way through this immense movement that lasted, you know, 50, 60 years. So um, uh, it, that was really the, the turning point. And why is it an important story to tell now? Why is it still relevant? Because it, there's so much to it, isn't there, apart from the fact that it makes mm. us appreciate mm. having the vote mm. and what these women mm. do. Mm. It is still so relevant, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think central to all our desires to do in this film was to tell a great story, and it was fascinating to us to actually... Um, look back at history and realise that there's a whole area of history that we don't see through the eyes of women. So suddenly looking at that pre-First World War period through the eyes of this group of very eclectic women um, became really exciting to us. And what became important was, you know, looking back at the fight that Mrs Pankhurst took on was reminding a 21st century audience and the 21st century woman in particular how hard it was to get our vote and how important it is we use it. And that became a very powerful... Um, kind of conversation we had around the film, but also became central to the film and the drive of wanting to make it. Um, it started us all talking about women in the film industry. Um, what's your view? How equal is mm. the film industry at the moment? I think what's been fascinating for me is working on this film has helped me re-engage with my own feminism and my own activism. And I think when you start to look at the um, figures across the board, not only in the film industry, but industry in general, in the world of business, in the world of law, we know that the stats don't add up. You know, we have the London Film Festival coming up, which has a real emphasis on strong films led by strong women, fronted by women, um, which is really exciting, um, but it still represents only 20% of the films in the film festival. And I, it's even less films that were made um, by women last year. So I think, you know, it, a part of it is creating the discourse around the film is terrific. And I think any discourse around the film is really interesting and important because I think it makes us all aware that, you know, we haven't reached equality and we, it's, it, there's still a fight to go. And you're obviously female, your director's female, producers are female. Mm. How rare is that? Uh, I think, you know, the emphasis when we've been working on this film is to try and draw as many women as we can to the film, but also make sure that they are in front and behind the camera. And, uh, you know, it is rare, particularly behind the camera, to find women. And um, I think one of the emphasis is it, on this film is being looking across the range and saying, OK, what, you know, can we have more female focus pullers? Can we have more female production designers? Can we have one, women in positions of power in the creative team? And so it's been really refreshing for me to work with a complete female ensemble. But I also think it hopefully brings up the conversation about how can we start to create more opportunities to be, bring more women into the industry so that they can tell their stories as well because that's what we really need is we need a selection of diverse stories and the story of women in the past and in the present is absolutely vital and it's, it reflects our life. And so if we don't see films reflecting our life, then how do, can we expect women to go to, to watch movies? And mm. um, why do you not think that there are more women mm. going into the film industry? And it is sort <laughs> of a bit of a microcosm of what's going on elsewhere isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it's a really complex question. I think it may be partly to do with the fact that, you know, we all need our role models and our mentors and we hold on to those and I think traditionally men have had more obvious um, mentors and have had more obvious role models to, you know, there have been a number of very significant male um, film directors of which we can name, you know, from Spielberg through to Scorsese. It is harder to find the women. They are there, and they are the women that inspired me, like Nancy Myers and Nora Ephron and Catherine Bigelow and Andrea Arnold and Lynwood Ramsey, but I've searched them out, I've looked for them. Um, and I say I think it's an element of um, we need to feel like we have more people snapping at our heels, more women snapping at our heels, at our heels but I think we also need to encourage women to feel like it is an industry that's open to them. Um, I think it's also to do with the structure of Hollywood and the structure of a lot of film industry that has been led by men. Um, I think we're used to seeing ensembles of 
films, um, films with an ensemble of men in them, um, which means that some of the men can have smaller parts, which builds up their currency to then put them into the primary position of being leading men. I think often when you look at films, you may have one or two leading women, but it doesn't tend to be ensemble. Um, so I think it's a very complex question about making sure there are more opportunities for women so that they can be encouraged to come into the industry. And, and you touched on it before, but um, mm -hmm. why is it so important? Why do a lot of people say it's only film? You know, it's mm -hmm. much more important that women mm -hmm. are, are doctors, are lawyers, mm -hmm. are all of these different mm -hmm. things. But I mean, film is, is it, it shows us so much, doesn't it? And it yeah, I think I mean I think you know I think you're right. One's aim as a writer is to try and inspire, provoke encourage, reassure, affirm, um, um, you know, push, push a dialogue forward. And I think if we don't write the stories that we experience as women, then how can we ever expect the world to change? You know, I think we use film sometimes as a way to reflect, but also to change and inspire us. And so I think, I think what, what's really been interesting about the suffragette film for us is the discourses that we're having around it. And it is raising those questions about why why don't we have equal pay with men, not only within the film industry, but beyond? You know, Why are, is it that it seems that female actresses have had to stand up and say, we're not getting paid the same as men, we're not being offered the same parts as men? You know, I think these are questions that you could ask in any industry, and I hope just by the very act of making a film like this, it makes you also self-reflect on your own industry and where you're at in your life and go, okay, am I equal? Does it make you angry? Because the more I um, think about it, the more angry I get. Yeah, I mean, I think, anger's, I mean, I think anger can be an incredibly useful tool. Um, I think I feel actually more inspired than anything. I mean, I think, you know, we're, we're living in an age where social media has made us engage globally with inequality, and that it makes me very angry and feel very impotent when I look at the world and look at the inequality across the world and realise that I cannot do anything directly. But in a really minor way, I think trying to find those stories of inspiring women and an inspiring movement, and actually cast a light on women and the story that hasn't been told, which is the story of the working woman at that time. And these women were voiceless, they weren't literate. Um, I think we're just, you know, you're trying to push forward and create knowledge, and knowledge is power. So um, I hope that that's what the film can do at its best. And you said before you were a feminist. What, do you, what does that um, mean to you? Well, you know, I think feminism, it's a, I think what's interesting about feminism is that I think if you'd asked me four years ago, I may have shrugged it off. I think I was, I was much more shallow. <laughs> but actually, I sit quite comfortably in my feminism. You know, I know, I know some great feminists, and they're often men. You know, and feminism just means equality for the sexes. And I think that's what we're trying to do, is just get equality for women and push forward equality for women across the board. And so it just means equal means equal. So I think that's just what any living hu human being would want, isn't it? So um, that's what it means to me. Um, but some people kind of think it's a dirty word, mm. of, or have always, mm. and again there are mm. there are grumblings of that mm. again. Mm. And why do you think that? I think the word are feminism. Scared of it? You know what? I think the word feminism has gone through every decade, and it will continue to survive. And actually, it doesn't really matter what I feel about being a feminist. It's it's interesting that we're talking about it, you know. And I think that's what's important. I feel quite comfortable about saying I'm a feminist. You know, I have an 11 year old daughter. You know, I need to be a strong role model for her. She certainly is for me. Um, and so that's my take on it. And, um, but I think the most important thing is we're talking about what feminism means. So if it starts to raise those questions about quality of pay, about diversity, about um, you know, the sexual exploitation of women across the globe, then I think those are really important issues. And you know, a playwright in, in, in London will survive whether or not you know, anyone agrees with whether she's a feminist or not. You know, it will survive as a term. Um, Meryl Streep has recently said that she's a humanist, mm. not a feminist. Mm. Do you kind of think, yeah, she, she has a platform. She could have said, yes, I am. Meryl Streep is an astonishing and um, experienced advocate for the industry. And I think anything that she says is really heartfelt and intelligent. And I think her response to that was well thought out. I think the danger is, is that you know, journalism, at its worst, can be reductive. Mm -hmm. And so, you, of course, you have to think carefully about what you say. But she's very experienced. And I, anything that Meryl Streep um, feels and thinks, I'm very happy to stand by. I certainly don't want to be reductive, but I have to ask you about this this furore over mm. the T-shirts mm. that the cast mm. um, wore mm. um, in the last week or so, saying, I'd rather be a rebel mm. than a slave. People are saying that maybe they should have known better. Do you mm. have a view on it? Um, I think we all acknowledge and are aware of the sensitivity of the subject, certainly in America, but it was always our intention to portray the movement of 1912 women led by Emmeline Pankhurst. The quote used was a direct quote from her. Um, 
And, you know, we were living in a very different Britain today. It's one story, and I hope there will be continuing stories about injustice across the world, but the main thing is the stories about inequality, and I would hope that it doesn't distract from that, that intention, because it was always an intention to actually make a film that would inspire women to promote inequality across the world for all women.